Good morning everyone, hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Nina and this is A Really Good Life. It is Tuesday the 12th of February and I have just got back from the GP this morning. I've had to go in because I've been literally pretty much bedridden for the last couple of days with a chest infection. So you probably hear me panting for breath. <coughs> so I'm on all these different types of antibiotics now and I've been given the rest of the week off work because I'm infectious to, you know, anyone else, particularly those who are immune compromised. So yeah, I'm kind of on house arrest, but I thought I would vlog today and show you um, what I've just received. And that is, I'm just gonna turn the camera slightly. That is my Light and Easy box. So Light and Easy is like a company that does um, pre-prepared meals, so breakfast, lunch, dinner and desserts. But they're normally like, they're traditionally known for weight loss, weight management, and that's not exactly, it's not really the reason why I'm doing this. Now, don't get me wrong, I have primary progressive MS, still got it, no cure yet. And weight management when you have impaired mobility is definitely always an issue. I mean, calorie in, output, you know, yeah, it kind of doesn't match all the time. So, but I thought I would just show you that whilst I am really sick and down probably for the next couple of weeks, I decided to go ahead and order light and easy. Now, light and easy can be, they're not NDIS approved provider, but that doesn't matter for me in terms of meal prep. So, what I do with Light and Easy is NDIS can cover 70% of the cost and I um, pay 30% of the cost, which is the actual cost of the food itself. And then you have um, the 70% will cover the packaging, the delivery, the actual cooking, the processing, all that kind of stuff. So I'll show you what we've got inside the boxes. So this is how it comes packed. And I'll just take one of these bags out at random, maybe this one, and I'll show you what's inside. So for this week, because I'm recovering from this really bad chest infection, I've decided to put a lot of emphasis on nutrition for this week and trying to build my strength back up. So I've gone ahead and I've done breakfasts and lunches with Light and Easy for the next two weeks. And then after that, I don't think I'll go ahead any further with it. Out of that, I think this order, I think it was $150, give or take, and then I paid 45 of that out of my own pocket and 105 came out of NDIS. So I will do that for the next two weeks to get me back on track. Um, I'm on three different types of antibiotics and it really ravages your, your system, your body. It, it weakens you. Probiotics... You know, there's only so much you can do, but good nutrition is really essential to get someone with, with a chronic disease like MS back on track. Otherwise, you know, without that, well, I, my recovery would be probably a lot more delayed. What I'm really struggling with at the moment is being laid up in bed, being laid up in bed and not being able to do anything and I'm not doing my normal acrobics, I'm not doing physio, I haven't, you know, like I've, like even Chef said to me, I should rest and not go to film school this weekend, but we'll see, but it's really hard. I'm not used to resting. Guess I have to, guess I have to listen to my body. Hmm. A few hours later and I'm actually just sitting in bed. I've made another cup of Tetley's. Yes, like that is something you didn't expect. And I'm reading my new book that I bought, Say Hello by Carly Findlay. Now Carly, I met Carly when I was in Melbourne late last year. And Carly, I'll read you I'll read you part of her part of the chapter. It says Carly Finlay is an award winning writer, speaker and appearance activist. She writes on disability and appearance diversity issues for news outlets, including the ABC, Sydney Morning Herald and SBS. So I bought this book because I think it, like personally, this is just me speaking, I think it's so rare to see someone with a disability 
you know, writing and being featured in the mainstream. So, um, her disability is that she lives with a rare, severe skin condition. As you can see, her face, her skin colour looks red. Now, I can't even pronounce the name of this skin condition. Ich, ichthyosis. I think, I hope that's how you pronounce it. Ichthyosis. So, I'll read you just the preface. So, it says... Often the first thing people say to me is a comment or question about my appearance, even before they say hello. They blurt out what they're thinking, sometimes out of concern, and other times because they don't think. Things like, what happened? What happened to your face? Are you sunburnt? I'm so sorry for how you look. Oh God, oh look at her, holy shit. Mum, did you see her? Wow. Can you imagine having to put up with that day in and day out, what that would do to you? I just want to know, have any of you bought this book yet? And if so, let me know in the comments box below what you think of it. And um, I'm really proud of her. That's all I can say. I'm just proud that someone with a disability is writing for the mainstream. And the book's been, by all accounts, a raging success. So. I am going to continue drinking my Tetley's. I'm finding this whole, whole idea of being stuck at home sick really kind of frustrating. It's 38 degrees outside today here. It's fucking hot. It's hot. I've got the air con on and I'm just chilling out. I'm literally just chilling out. I'm going to read my book. Talk to you sometime soon. I'm really sorry, like that I'm not doing anything more interesting. This is literally my life at the moment, being stuck home sick on three different types of antibiotics and, you know, MS and bronchiectasis. What a combination. Hi, morning, good morning guys. It's Wednesday and I really don't feel much better than yesterday. I rang my manager this morning and let them know that I definitely won't be in for the rest of the week. Um, it's, what time is it, nine o'clock? It's just on nearly nine o'clock and I have just gotten ready for the day. So yeah, I thought I would start this vlog, well this day's part, of the vlog by showing you that I'm just about to have my breakfast and I'm going to take my antibiotics, my Panadol, and I was going to show you what a typical meal through Light and Easy might look like for breakfast. So we've got two slices of soy linseed bread, we've got some tasty cheese slices, an egg that we're going to cook, and we've got baked beans. Now. I wish they had some bacon, but I'm guessing that ain't kind of included. And then we've got a cup of light uh, Australian pears just in natural juice. So I'll get all this out, I'll start cooking, and I'll show you. Oh my god, I just really want to go back to bed. I'm so sick. So there you have it. My breakfast is ready. It's, well, it's just on nine o'clock. I'll just show you what I've got. I've got two slices of soy and linseed bread, some baked beans and cheese on top. I'm gonna to have one boiled egg, a little bit of salt to add to that, and the all important sups. So I always have 300 milligrams of COQ10 in the morning. That's for mitochondrial health. And then of course, the MCT oil. So I'm actually gonna drizzle a teaspoon, tablespoon of this over my breakfast. Now isn't that a really good start to the day? After this, I really don't know what I'm gonna do. I may just go back to bed. We're gonna see how we feel. Good morning, it's Saturday now, and I'm here with Elaine at film school. It is so good to have you back, Elaine. You've been gone for weeks. It's probably been two months since I last saw you. Mm. And we're late to film school because I had to go down to my mum's house and we fed the cockatoos and then got distracted and Chev ate a protein ball. And um, so we're 15 minutes late. How do you feel about that, Elaine? Oh, well, 
Oh wow. You're the, you're the queen of your schools. <laughs> We're about to start practicing our skills in interviewing. <laughs> but before we start, Elaine has to do her makeup. Yeah. I need special lighting filters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make my eyes look more defined. <laughs> Give us a demo. You look amazing already. Yeah, but it can always look better. <laughs> now, I know that I should have probably stayed home and been in bed because I am recovering from walking pneumonia. But I just had to be here. I had to be here with my mates. I had to come and see Elaine. I had to be part of the... Well, it's the two foxy ladies now, not three. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of sad, but I just had to be here and participate. So, Elaine has. I'm gonna go. I'm. I'm gonna go back to bed after this, and I have Chev looking after me. So, what more could I ask? But we're gonna start asking the questions. You are looking like an absolute superstar now, Elaine. Thank you. Do you want me to start? Yes, please. Okay. So we've got to ask each other a question off this list, and then it's got to be. Um, like, you know, in-depth answers. So I'll choose a question. Okay. Okay. Would you rather be the captain of the school sports team or be the school genius? I'm going to be a school genius. And why? Why would you prefer to be the school genius? Because the school genius knows everything and do you think that would make your life easier like in the long run after you leave school you get a better job that's right they have brains they are so smart they can do well in anything everything i would actually sort of agree with that i definitely would agree with that do you want to ask me a question yes. pick one pick oh you can even ask me a question that's not on the list we can break the rules or you can you can ask me a question out of the book. <laughs> a question a day. This is the book that I bought, and there's a question on every page. I'm actually interested in in a question that Nina said this morning in class. What was that? She said, "What is the lucky thing in your life and the unlucky thing in your life?" Okay, so you want me to answer that one? How am I lucky in life and why do I think that I'm unlucky? Um, I don't think that I'm unlucky at all. I think that I'm very lucky and very blessed. I don't know if lucky is even the right word, but, um, you know, to have, to have the job that I do, the people in my life that I do, I've got a roof over my head, I've got some money in the bank. What more could I possibly want? I'm very happy. So, what about you? Do you think that you're lucky in life or unlucky? That's a good answer. Well, in life, it's always up and down. Sweet and bitter. Hmm. Fashion, everything. <laughs> but overall, I'm still a lucky person. We are in a lucky country. We are. We are indeed. There is much to be thankful for. Trent's got some big news that he wants to share with us. Uh, yes, I um, will maybe go up to Sydney with my mum. Yes. I said that to my mum, don't I? I am going up to Sydney and I think I'm going to be on Mean News. Oh cool, um, what for? Being an interviewer, I think, yeah. To do what? You're going to interview Interviewing people? Interviewing people, yeah. Awesome, when's this? I, I don't know yet. Uh, mum told me, say, do you want to do it? And I said, yes, I do. And I was like, okay, we, we got up to Sydney and do, do that. Good and on you, like, Trent. Awesome. You're in? I'm, I'm doing it. Good. What will you tell them? Um, will you tell them to be sexy? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, keep I, I, that, I keep saying that. I keep saying that to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw one Facebook pet, um, thing and I saw on Facebook. It was you making a video yeah. with Steph. 
was in the car with you, and you said to um, set up, set out for me, and saying uh, you'll be sexy. <laughs> I, I, I saw that video. We have we have just finished bus stop film school for the day, and we've just brought Elaine down to the fish tackle shop. Fish what did you get, Elaine? Fish bits. Where are you going to go fishing? Am I invited? Can I come fishing too? That's a no. Yeah. <laughs> That's a problem. That's a problem. I don't know where to go. <laughs> you don't? Oh, you haven't started fishing yet? I, I, I thought of. Fishing is fun. It's a fun sport. It is. I realize why am I interested in men's sport? <laughs> why? I used to fish when I was young, very young. My brother used to take me down Balamdi Lagoon area. I can't remember ever catching anything, but you know, it's the thought that counts. We've arrived in Port Kembla as part of the Wonder Walls Festival, and there's this awesome cool shop called Fairy Meadow Miniatures. So you can buy a doll's house. This particular one here is $150 with all the furniture in it. But what I find most exciting is the fact that Barbie is there and she's in the bed with two men. Now, I'm really not quite sure what kind of house this is, but on, sounds like a fun house. I'll probably see them once a month. I think she has like oh, yeah. all the numbers and she just calls. It's Saturday night now, about 6.45 p.m. I've had an absolutely fabulous day. I really have. I feel like I'm recovering from this bout of walking pneumonia and I'm not really good at resting. I have learnt that. I've got one of those type A personalities. I just can't seem to stop. I'm very driven, I admit that. Resting was hard this week for me, but I am recovering um, thanks to new antibiotics again, another type, and prednisone, just a low oral dose just to bring the inflammation down. But I had a fabulous day today at film school. Shout out to my mate Trent Potter. You are awesome, dude. Then Wonder Walls, as you saw, went down to Port Kembler and had a look around. Just fantastic, but I've got my Tetley's now. And I'm going to do, like I always do, a question a day from this book that I've got. So it just sort of, I just use it as a bit of a, I don't know, an icebreaker. And I want, I'd love if, I'd love it. Oh my God, I'm tongue twisted. Ah! I'd love it if you would answer the questions with me. Um, it helped us to get to know each other because, well, I'm sharing my life. So let's, let's share a bit of yours too. So a question a day. I'm going to open it up. What question have we got today? Oh, ho, 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 ho. this is a good one. When in life have you felt most alone? <laughs> wow, that's a good one. Probably most recently, I would say 
4th of December 2018, 4.41am, my phone rang. My mother was in hospital in the, in the palliative care unit and I knew at that time of morning the phone call was going to be about her and the nurse answered and she said, hello. She said, is Iris, is Iris there? And I said, no. I said, this is Iris's daughter, Nina. And, and she got flustered. She'd made a mistake. I guess doing these kind of calls was not something that you do every day, so I totally forgive her for that. And then she told me that um, her, my mum had passed a little while ago, and I just remember listening, and I, and I asked her if I could come in and spend some time with mum. And then when the phone, when I hung the phone up, I just sort of dropped to my knees. And I've never felt truly more alone in that moment that that she's passed and that's it because it's a final that's the final point there is no going back so there's no doing overs there's no second chances mum's mum's dead mum's gone um in other respects i would definitely say probably when i was young growing up with a single parent and having kids um who come from more perhaps affluent backgrounds and they would always say, oh, where's, where's your dad? Or, you know, where's your dad? Have you got, a, have you got siblings? Um, what does your dad do? And the answer was, quite truthfully, I said, I don't know. And they'd say, oh, how can you not know? And I said, well, if my dad was a good man in the picture, you know, they would be here. And they're not. So why would I be, um, you know, crying for them? Why would I be a miss for them? I don't know. But... Just that pressure from the more functional, affluent kids, I guess you could say. Yeah, that, that was that's a point I remember being quite lonely. In terms of having a disability and 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 that effect on like my loneliness levels, no, I, I don't think it's had any impact at all. I feel connected, I feel part of the community, I'm, I'm very happy. Um, having a disability has not made me feel alone. Can I say that? Yeah, that's, that would be the truth. Um, so with that being said, I will wrap this vlog up here and I will let you go. But I want to thank you again for supporting me again in this year. I'm thoroughly enjoying another year of vlogging. And I hope you are too because there would be not much point if you didn't. But <laughs> um, please give me a big thumbs up if you liked this video. Let me know in the comments box below your thoughts. Discuss with me anything, really, you know, just let me know how you're going. In all honesty, I just love to know. And I'll see you again next time. But always remember, despite the challenges of life, it really is. Oh, I can feel it coming. Oh, yeah. Mm, it's a good one today. Oh, oh, oh. it's a really good life. Woo!